Hi everybody, it's Sherry from Sherry Jones Designs. Thank you for joining me here today. Today we're going to make this cute upcycled apron tunic. And I decided to do a voiceover. The traffic was just too noisy. So here I am. I'm cutting off the sleeves off of these shirts. I chose men's 2X shirts to make this tunic. I normally use 2X short shirts. Um, you can use extra large and you know these are men's shirts you need them pretty baggy pretty roomy for that uh for the look that this design has and here you see now i'm removing the collars you have to cut this shirt apart um, and then each piece can be used individually and there's different ways of making these i like to use jeans in them when I make them sometimes so that's what I did in this one because I thought it was cute it kind of went the black jeans kind of went with the black shirt so here I'm cutting the shoulder sh the the uh, shoulder seams and you want to remove that back piece because uh, you have to ruffle and gather that the uh, top back seam there and um, yeah, so here I am. I'm cutting it apart. And this, this tunic isn't really hard to make. It, there are quite a few pieces you put together. And sometimes I think I spend more time putting on patches and buttons than actually the garment actually it takes to construct. So then you want to do the same with the second shirt. And once you've got your shirts deconstructed, you put the right sides together. And here I put the first one. And I usually put my back on first. And uh, then what you want to do with right sides together, you want to match that seam. And then I use a little clip and I clip it at those seams, you know, because that's where you're going to be sewing it. And uh, you want to make sure that they're, you know, lined up. And then you just flatten it out nice and smooth as best you can. You're, you, you may have a little bump here and there, you know, it just... But it's, and this is fun. This is, this is just, re, it's very relaxing to sew this way. And then you're going to cut an angle seam from the, uh, where I pointed there to, um, you're going to want to kind of miss that pocket because you might want to use that later on. You know, I kind of make things up as I go. Like, I don't know if I'm going to use, need that pocket. So I, I usually try to not cut them off. Sometimes I do <laughs> accidentally cut them off. And that's the fun thing about upcycling is that you're like, oh, okay, I'll just do something else. You know, you don't have like a pattern, a difficult pattern to follow. So here I am, I'm, I'm cutting the other side and I just make sure by looking across that it's about the same height and starts in about the same place. Sometimes you can look at buttonholes and tell, you know, or the in plaid, you can be on the same stripe. And here, because a uh, sleeve is curved, those will curve like back out, in and out. And so I want those to go straight up. So I trim them straight up. And now here you'll see that I'm making the, that back piece. You know, I make, I tried to cut it with scissors and did a terrible job. So, <laughs> and this, on this one, I've got the front and the back pieces are different heights. Usually there's the same height, but I actually had a hole in the green piece. So I had to cut it shorter. And it's okay if when you're wearing it, if the back is lower or the front is lower, it's still cute either way. And so I'm setting that aside. And next I'm gonna deconstruct my jeans. And here I'm gonna cut out, not every jean has this, but most of them do. They have that seam right there that's extra thick. And so I like to use that for the straps of the tunic. And it, it just, I like the way it looks. And I have uh, my own personal uh, pair of these that, of tunic that has that. And I really like it. So I'm, you could split this all the way down the leg. But I decided not to because I wanted to use that leg for something else. So I actually just came in from the top because I need that to lay flat because that's going to be the front and the back of my tunic. So I'm just splitting it down the sides so I can lay it flat. But the easiest way would be just to go all the way down the leg of the jean on the side. But I opted not to because I I had other plans for that. So here I am. I'm going to lay it flat. And now i got to get that the right size. That's going to be my back piece. And there is my template that I use. 
which is nine and a half by five inches. And I actually, normally on the front, I will make the front longer than that because a lot of times I actually install a zipper or some other design. So um, that's just the length. And I decided, oh, right there, I decided that it had a leather patch and I wanted to keep that. So I took that off. And here I'm cutting it out. And I'm going to, I've decided I don't want to cut into the pockets. And so I'm going to make this back a little bit shorter than I normally do, which I've done this before and I think it's cute. Um, I decided to follow it like this and this will be my back piece. And um, it's, and make sure you have a good pair of scissors if you go to do this because yeah, it's hard to cut the jeans if you don't. And I've decided just to cut the pockets out. Sometimes I use them big like this and sometimes I trim the pocket. It just depends what I, at the time, I think is gonna look good. And that's a fun thing about upcycling. You get to make it up as you go. And it really is artwork. It's, you're not following an exact pattern. You're following and putting together things and designs that you think look good. That's why I like it. Okay, so now we're going to do the front, and for the front, you got to make sure those pockets are tucked in if you're using a pair of jeans for the front. Otherwise, take that template size, and you can use any fabric um, for the front. And my camera had trouble here. I'm not sure why. It may have been my elbow, but I was struggling to focus a little bit. So here I'm marking out, and I decided you can't go too deep, of course, because it is um, a pair of jeans. You can only go so far, so... Once I get it flat enough and I've decided how long I want it, again, you gotta really keep those uh, uh, pockets tucked in or you'll cut them in the wrong place. I'm gonna cut that out. With jeans, they flare out a little bit as you go towards the seat. So you have to make it flat. Like see how I'm flattening the pocket there? And I'm gonna use a clip to hold that or a pin. You could use a clip or a pin. I guess here I've decided to use a pin. And so I'm going to sew those pockets shut to keep it flat, but you want to make sure, you know, you've got it in place. And I'm going to clip that because the jeans have a curve there, and I'm just going to lay it over and sew it down. So I'm going to clip it to hold it, you know, where it would be flat. And now we're over at the machine, and here you want to start your seam where, you know, we clip them together for the two seams from the shirt. You want to start a little bit before that so that you can fold for your hems. And I'm, normally I do this on a serger, but I wanted to do it on a machine. And here I'm using a, first a straight stitch. And I'm going to sew all the way down. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to zigzag this. And the reason that I do this, if I'm doing it on a machine and not the serger that I have, is that I don't want it to fray too much and I want that seam to be strong. So I'm going to come back after I clip my threads so they don't tangle into my machine. Is I'm going to zigzag this and that'll keep it from fraying and make the garment last longer. It'll make it easier to wash and make it last longer. Always doing a back stitch. Okay, so now what, I, what I'm going to do and what I'm doing here is I'm zigzagging all the raw edges, the top, the, the uh, sleeve holes. I'm going to zigzag them all so they won't fray when I go ahead and put the garment together. And then for the sleeves, you just turn about a quarter of an inch under and you're going to towards the, the um, not the good side, but you know, towards the inside of the garment and you're going to do a straight stitch and you're going to stitch those edges under. And I just, you could pin it beforehand, but I've done this enough. I don't really have to, but you can go ahead and clip it or pin it if it makes you more comfortable. So you're going to turn those under a quarter inch. You don't turn the 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 top parts under a quarter inch just the sleeves and here I'm sewing my pockets shut where I'd pin them and then you want to cut off any excess from the back side once you get everything sewn down so that you know it wears and lays flat uh, next to you yeah this is it doesn't take too long to make one of these but it is I did clip a lot out of this video I broke like three needles here's an example of one uh, that I made earlier that I thought was so cute. So yeah, so here here I go, I'm trimming it up and I've got, I'm going to attach it. So you take it um, and, and then you finger gather. And I've marked the middles so I know how much goes on each side and that really helps me. 
So I'm finger gathering here. And when I get to the middle, I've got a pin right there that I knew was the middle. So I've got equal amounts on both sides. And with denim, I like to leave it raw on, on the edges and bottom because I like the way it looks when it frays. But you could do some kind of like, um, you know, sometimes I surge them if I want to. But to And then here I'm doing the back. And the back on this is a little bit tricky because it did dip down. So I had to make sure that the fabric laid flat and was folded up under it. But it's not too hard. Here I am putting on the uh, those jean straps I, that we cut and I, att I attach them all the way down the sides of the it just gives it extra strength like it doesn't stretch out and I think it looks really cute I broke like I said I broke two needles doing this I had the wrong needle in the machine and um, it was all my fault my machine uh, was doing what it was supposed to do I was just too lazy to change my needle out when I went to the jean fabric so yeah, it's one of those things, I guess. But once you get them down the, the sides, and, and um, then I laid it over on my table here. And, kept, and I kept bumping my um, tripod, which I didn't realize was touching the table. That's what was making it shake. And I pinned those, those uh, they're at five and a half inches on the tables for a total of 11 inch strap. But you can try it on and clip it until you get it to where you want it to fit and then sew your strap on to the to the other side and then i attached that little leather piece as well because i thought it was cute and the fabric was discolored there so i decided to go ahead and put it back on and um i just thought it made it look cuter and then i attached my pockets i i put them on each side where i wanted them and i did some cute patches and we are almost done here i went ahead and did some on the front as well which you were see and thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end, I appreciate everything. If you have any questions, put it in the comment section down below. And yeah, like and subscribe and share. Guys, I'm just getting started. I hope to do lots of tutorials. And there it is. Isn't it cute? It's so cute. I appreciate everything. And thank you so much. And bye for now.